Now, in one of your latest videos, you refer to yourself as a humble beast. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Humble beast. A humble beast. Um, I feel like a humble. I, I heard that. I first heard that from from my homie. He played basketball. I seen it and I related to it. Humble beast. It, it means, first of all, c growing up in the jungle, you become a beast. To me, that's you become a beast, and when you adapt to it, it turns you into a beast. Cause that's what that's what the jungle is made of, beast. But being a humble beast is really using your head, being humble, down to earth. You a beast, you know you a beast. People who know you a beast know you a beast. But you be humble. You bring the beast out when it's time. You let the beast speak for itself. That's what I am. I'm a humble beast. I don't really, by me being an artist and all that type of shit, I don't try to like, I push my brand, but I don't push my brand. I don't force my brand. I don't walk up and ask people, you know who I am? Shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I let my music and my personality speak for itself. And this, I, I am a beast. I know I'm a beast. And I'm humble. Yeah, because we've been fucking with each other for a little while now, and I'm still seeing the same little herb today that I'm seeing back then in terms of the attitude. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I've seen a lot of artists get on some Hollywood shit quickly. No, Six I, months in, I, a year I, in. I don't, I don't really, I feel like I got to stay humble and down to earth. It's just me. Because that's how, when you give out good, you get good back. When you fuck with people, you know what I'm saying? When you fuck with street niggas, you get you get that back, cause I can relate. I can relate to street niggas, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to even when you at clubs and shit like that, shows when you got street niggas who wanna embrace you, that's what they do. Even if they seem like they fans or nothing, but ain't that who you do it for, your fans? You know what I'm saying? I fuck with niggas. It's a point, it's a line that you draw, and if you cross that line, then you know what I'm saying? But you, you supposed to embrace motherfuckers and, and anybody. I, ain't, I, I don't wanna feel like, I'm Hollywood or too much, you know what I'm saying, more, you know, I, I just, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's different, you can't really take every picture and shit like that, but you know what I'm saying, you supposed to embrace your fans and shit like that and fuck with people, I'm just, I'm normal, like I tell you all the time, like when I, I be having up my homies and them crazy, they walk up on business like, man, females, like you know who this is, who I tell you, like I ain't nobody, I be chilling, like I'm a regular person at the end of the day, you know. And that's that's how I wanna always feel, even though I know I know I'm not just a normal average Joe out here, but I am a, a human being, bro. Like I be chilling. I just wanna live life and master my craft and be happy and just fuck with everybody and I want everybody to fuck with me, you know what I'm saying? I don't really even I I'm a I'm a to myself type of nigga. I don't embrace everybody, but I I'm mutual, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with everybody, like even I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the shit I got, all my enemies in the streets. I don't want to have no enemies out here doing what I do. You know what I'm saying? Right. What I want to do best. I'm an artist, you know what I'm saying? So. Now, growing up, you actually dropped out of high school. Yeah. What uh, what year did you drop out? Like, like junior year, like beginning of my junior year, almost mid junior year. So I went for like a month or two. Junior year, probably two, three months or some shit. So you were like halfway done, more or less, like Almost, a little more than yeah. halfway. Like, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I got to my junior year. Yeah. Okay, but well, why'd you drop out? I don't know. I, I basically like I just they let me back in junior. Year. I damn near dropped out sophomore year. Like I wasn't going. You know what I'm saying? But it was yeah. uh, really I went on a team on my one playing basketball. They was blackballing us at school as we. Labeling us as gang members, all that shit. It was too much going on. I was in the streets. I was who? I mean, I was doing the rap shit, so I was making money. All type of shit was going on. Um, and I just was not going, bro. It was too much going on in Chicago. You feel me? Like, I was going to school. They talking about smelling like weed. Police in there fucking with us. I stopped going. It was niggas in there that... We was getting into it with all type of crazy ass shit, you know, niggas we already was into it with. Uh, I just, there wasn't no point of going, cause I know what's gonna happen when so I get into it with a motherfucker, it's gonna go one or two ways, so I ain't finna keep going to school, doing this clown ass shit. <laughs> but I so, was that's that was my attitude then, you feel me? That's not my attitude now. 
But back then, that was my attitude. I wasn't finna keep on going there. I wasn't like learning no more. I knew I wasn't finna, I wasn't trying to be a doctor. I wasn't trying to be a lawyer. I wasn't trying to go to college. I wasn't playing basketball no more, so I wasn't trying to go to college. There wasn't no point in me being in there no more. I'm making money. I'm from doing everything I need to be doing on my own. So I was taking care of myself. I wasn't finna keep going to school. It was just over with. And then my mama went and got my report card like junior year for the, you know, like my mama never really, like in grammar school, of course she was at report card pickup. High school, not so much because I was getting my own shit and all type of shit was going on. So she went and got my report card. I was at home asleep, of course. <laughs> um, and she just saw like, well, she been knew I wasn't going to school down there, but she just saw like all Fs like in her hand and saw like all the days absent and she told me like, you might as well just stop going. I'm like, shit, cool, all right. <laughs> well, did your mom realize the the dangerous aspect of you actually being in school with the gang shit and everything else? Yeah, like my that? mama knew everything that was going on, like every single thing. Like when I was getting suspended for fighting, she had uh, came up there for all that shit. My mama knew what was going on with me. She knew I was game banging all that. Like, you know, she knew I was in the streets. Not I ain't really game banging, but we was doing us, you feel me? Yeah. Cause I wasn't in no gang, I wasn't in no street gang. I was in LMB. I mean, but it, it, it sounds crazy from an outsider looking at it going like, okay, th this, th this kid drops out of school because he might potentially get killed by going to school. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, like you feel me. And then I was when I was in school, I used to we used to drive though. We had cars back then, so we used to, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't used to be fucking with the bus and shit like that. But even when when I was a freshman and shit like that, we used to catch the bus just because that's what we was doing, catching the bus, you know what I'm saying? And then we used to ride in hot cars, you feel me? So it was all type of shit going on. I wasn't finna keep going to school. It was a risk. I was risking my life, risking my freedom. We was already in the streets, like Yes, you can get killed going to school. People got killed going to school. Right. Well, you had Early mentioned in the, the morning. That's interview. when you get killed on bus stops, going to school on your way to school, leaving out the house seven in the morning, shit like that. You would get killed like that easy in Chicago. Well, you had mentioned in a previous interview that you actually saw a shooting when you were in eighth grade, like right in front of you. I was seeing shootings way before eighth grade, but yeah, a lot of close shootings, seeing people getting shot, killed. I seen my first person get killed when I was young as hell. I had to be like 10 or some shit like that. In front of my auntie crib, she was moving on um, 69th and Paxton. I don't even know who it was, like that type of shit. So 10 years old, I mean, you're, you're, you're a little kid at this point. You're not even a teenager yet. Right. So 10 years old, you see someone lose their life right in front of you? Yeah. Like... Moving, I helping my auntie move. She was moving out of her apartment. My mama and my aunties, my cousin, we was little. I was in a car. My mama was loading the shit up. And shit, a nigga woke up. Was, niggas, they was out there. And just gave it to him right there. I was across the street in the car. Of course I'm ducking, but I'm, that's what happened. I wasn't trying to see that shit. <laughs> I mean, how'd you, like, how did you feel after watching that? Uh, I was a little ass kid, man, so I was scared, of course. I was scared as hell. And shit. Mm, I ain't, you know, I was thinking about it, but I, I don't know. It was regular, bro. Like, I've been, my cousin, like, I had a cousin, his homie got killed in my hallway. He got shot. My cousin got shot, and his homie got shot in the head, like, killed. They blew his brains out in my hallway. I was like three or four, so I've been. Like, I was hearing that. I remember it now. You see, I still remember it. I'm 20. So I was already, like, shit like that was already going on around me. All right. So <laughs> let's just take a step back for a second. It's, it's, you, you're, you're watching. That's, you're it watching. Wasn't just, it's, that's at the life of Chicago. It's people right. who have probably seen people get killed in their house in Chicago. You feel me? Type shit. Like, you know. Okay. So let's just take a step back. You see someone get killed at 10 years old. At 15, your mom actually agrees that you shouldn't go to school anymore because you might get killed. No, I was like, you know, no, I was like, I probably was like 16 or something. 16. Going on okay, 17. but I'm just saying. I might have been you going got... on 17, 17, okay. and junior year, man. I mean, was there ever a conversation of like, we got to get out of Chicago? Because 
Nah. This doesn't happen everywhere in the my country. My mama don't. She still don't want to leave Chicago. Or like, she don't want to leave Illinois, the state. She ain't trying to. She got to be close to my grandma. My dad got to be close to his mama. You know, I just try to put them in safe environments. And then even when I'm in Chicago, I move like I'm still out of town. So I don't know. It wasn't ever no conversation as a kid because I wasn't leaving Chicago. I don't care what I seen. All my homies in Chicago, my family, basketball, school, girls. I love Chicago. I'm not even going to lie to you. I wasn't thinking about leaving Chicago as a kid. I don't give a fuck what was going on. I mean, like, you I love, love Chicago, Chicago and I, you also you also my, like breathing. <laughs> like even no, for real. Like no, nah, I ain't. I don't, even when everything was going on, I ain't. Hell no, nah, I wasn't leaving Chicago, and I wasn't never like super in fear my life. That was just what was going on. I know how to move. I was always being smart. Even everything was going on in my life, I wasn't never trying to escape nothing. I ain't gonna well, lie. I'm smart. I, I I value my life. I ain't saying I'm too smart where well, nothing could happen to me, but what I feel like, I don't know, man. I wasn't trying to leave Chicago, though. I got too, uh, my family right. out there. Well, I mean, to be fair, Chief Keith lives in L.A. You know, I'm you, talking about then. Like now, well, but no, course, but I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I, I, I mean, I, but, well, I there's no difference, yeah, though, is there? I mean, LA, then I and now, it's know. still your life. Right, it's still. But I want I still have a crib in Chicago. I'll be in LA. I'll be in Chicago. Um, you know, so I still be in Chicago. I don't you know what I'm saying? Me and Sosa two different people, whatever Sosa got going on where he wanna be in LA. He just out there in LA. I want I I have a crib in LA and you know what I'm saying, I still be going back to Chicago just because like I my mama would still be out there, shit like that. My mama, my grandma, not getting on no plane going nowhere. So, really. So, if you told your mom, your grandmother, and your dad, look, I got y'all a nice, a nice spot in L.A. in a suburban area. It's safe. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You know, grandma, you don't want to fly. So I'm gonna send a car. I'm gonna send a limo right to now. come pick you up. My my mama ain't got to worry about nothing where she at right now. My grandma's straight. Okay. Um, my mom, my mama, she'll probably go. She not staying in LA though. Like she not even the type to adapt to no new environment. I don't think. Maybe when she get a little older in her fifties or something, probably. Hmm. You know, but not right now. She don't think. And she don't even like my mama. She don't even work. Like I be taking care of my mama. She don't. It ain't like she want to stay at a job. She just the type to want to stay in the crib, be with my aunties, shit like that. She ain't going nowhere. <laughs> they right. gotta stick together. Nobody in my family ever left and like went to Cali. Like, in my immediate family, all my aunties, my uncles, nobody never left Chicago and went nowhere. <laughs> I guess it just is what it is. And I got a big family, so. And it ain't even like that, like it is what it is. It's just, we gonna live our life, man. Whatever happened in life is destined to happen. Even with me and everything I had going on. I don't put myself in no, you know what I'm saying, fucked up situation. That was just the life I was living, and that's what was happening. He probably got something going on in L.A. where he might have needed that shit. I don't know why he showed up with it. Probably thinking like, man, look, you know, little young wild nigga from Chicago like guns. Want to see a gun. It was a nice gun. It was nice. Little tonight, I just got in a little altercation, and I guess... That other case was so weak, they wanted to put something on me. And so I, they charged me with a riot in the penal facility. So it was really just a regular fight? It's a little physical altercation. 